Let's discuss the derivation of the dynamic aggregate demand curve in this video. The AD here. Before we do that, let's first review the three curves I have in this picture. Uh, they are the monetary policy reaction curve, the aggregate expenditure curve, and the aggregate ex demand curve. Uh, let's first look at what's on the axis of these curves. For the monetary policy reaction curve, we have inflation rate on the horizontal axis and the real interest rate on the vertical axis. So what it says is basically when inflation rate going up, the uh, monetary policy authority would like to increase the real interest rate to curb the aggregate demand so that they can uh, reduce the inflation. They don't want the inflation going out of control. In this aggregate expenditure curve, what we have is the quantity demanded on the aggregate output on the horizontal axis and the real interest rate on the vertical axis. What this one is saying is that as the real interest rate going up, the quantity demanded on aggregate output going down. So this direction on the horizontal axis is going down. Uh, why is that? Because higher real interest rate means it's more expensive to borrow, to consume, to buy a car, to buy a house, or to buy the appliances in your home. That's consumption. Uh, higher real interest rate also means it's harder for the firms to start new product. They have to have really good high return new product to, to do the investment. So that also curb investment demand. So as the real interest rate going up, the quantity demanded on aggregate output will going down. Now in this aggregate demand curve, what we want to have together is the inflation rate and the real output. The inflation rate, that's the change in price level on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded on the real output on the horizontal axis. Uh, because basically we have a price and uh, quantity demanded the relationship, we have a demand curve, right? Uh, the inflation rate is the change in the price. Is exactly because the inflation rate is the change in the price level over time, uh, we call it the dynamic aggregate demand curve. That's, that's where the dynamic come from. We have the inflation rate. Uh, finally, because the quantity demanded is on the aggregate output level, so it is so-called aggregate demand, right? So we have dynamic aggregate demand in the third picture. Now let's go back to the derivation. Let's say inflation now start to increase. So inflation increase from pi one to pi two. It's going up in this direction. And then when the monetary authority, the central bankers see inflation going up, they would like to increase the real interest rate. They raise the real interest rate from R1 to R2. So real interest rate going up. Now on this curve, what we have is we move from point A to point B. On the monetary policy reaction curve, we move from point A to point B. Okay, basically what we have is a higher real interest rate as a result when inflation rate going up. So on this aggregate expenditure curve, we have higher real interest rate real interest rate going up and then we will have lower quantity demanded yd1 to yd2 lower quantity demanded on aggregate output right so the point on uh, aggregate expenditure curve is from a point now here to point b so it's moving up along the aggregate expenditure curve here just kind of going backwards in this picture is going forward right now we can link the change in inflation rate horizontal axis variable on the monetary policy reaction curve and the change in the uh, aggregate expenditure right 
the uh, quantity demanded on the aggregate output, the horizontal axis on the aggregate expenditure curve, link these two together. So again, let's uh, you know find out the low inflation linked to this high quantity demanded. So YD1, YD1 here, and then as the inflation going up to pi 2, this pi 2 here, right? And uh, the quantity demanded on aggregate output decrease, so we have uh, YD2 here. So again, this is decrease, right? So the point on the aggregated demand curve moves from A to point B, also going up along the, the AD curve, kind of going backwards, same as the aggregate uh, expenditure curve. As you can see, the only difference between the AD curve and the, the AE curve is what's on the vertical axis. It's actually through this monetary policy reaction curve we link the inflation rate change to the real interest rate change, then finally to the change in the quantity demanded on aggregate output. Thus, we have the AD curve.